evening. Uh, it is November 6th. Uh, welcome to the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board meeting this evening. My name is Rachel Zemberry. I'm the chair of the board. If I could have the other members of the board present in the room, please introduce yourselves. Uh, Steve Revelock, good evening. Good evening, Eugene Benson. And we have Ken Lau joining us uh, remotely. Hi, Ken. Yes, thank you. Uh, and we have the Director of the uh, Department of Planning and Community Development, Claire Ricker, joining us this evening as well. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. All right, let's just go ahead and jump into our first agenda item, which is to review the meeting minutes from the last four meetings. And we will start with the meeting minutes from October 2nd. And I will uh, run through and see if there are any additions or corrections to the meeting minutes as posted, starting with Ken. I have none. Great, starting with Jean. I do not have any. Steve? No changes, Madam Chair. And I do not either. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes from October 2nd, 2023 as submitted? So moved. Is there a second? Second. I'll take a roll call vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Steve? Yes. Jean? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Those minutes have been approved. We'll move on now to the meeting minutes from October 10th, 2023. Are there any additions or corrections starting with Kin? I have none. Jean? Jean? I have none. Steve? No changes. And I have no changes either. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes from October 10th, 2023 as submitted? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We'll take a vote starting with Kin. Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I may yes as well. Those meeting minutes have been approved. We'll move to the meeting minutes from October 16th, 2023. Any additions or corrections starting with Kin? No, I have none. Jean? Yes, two very minor corrections okay. on the second page. Um, about halfway down, it says the chair. It should be the vice chair. And then about two thirds of the way down, it says the chair. It should be the vice chair. Great, thank so I have you. Those two changes. Steve, any other additions or corrections? Uh, nothing here. Great. We'll uh, take see if there is a motion to approve the October sixteenth, twenty twenty three meeting minutes as amended. So moved. Is there a uh, second? Second. We'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Um, and we will now move to the October 23rd, 2023 meeting minutes. I have one small change. While I'm pulling those up, I will see, Ken, if you have any additions or corrections. I have none. Uh, Jean? None. Steve? None. So the only change I have in the uh, second paragraph before the bullet points on the first page um, I, where it says here, the chair noted that the board would need to decide whether or not they support the amendments, but they will not address it, each amendment unless specifically asked to do so. We could change that to can not address each amendment unless specifically addressed to do so. Um, that's the only change that I have. Uh, and I will see if there is a motion to approve these minutes as amended. So moved. Is there a second? Second. We'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those meeting minutes have been approved and that takes us through agenda item number one. Great, we'll now move to agenda item number two which is the continued public hearing for docket number 3752 Calix Peak at 251 Summer Street and I will hand it over to Claire Ricker. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I have spoken with the representative from Calix Peak um, several times over the past month or so about updated plans, site plans especially related to this project. And um, after careful consideration, they have asked that um, the board close the hearing um, that has been continued since June um, for the, uh, which refers to project plans that were submitted um, in, I believe it was May 23rd meeting. Um, they will, they may come back um, with updated plans um, for a, 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 a new special permit application, but at this time they are unable to come to terms with the property owner about um, the site and wish to withdraw. 
Great, thank you for the update, Claire. Sure. Um, and as this is an administrative action, I will um, ask each member of the board for their perspective to weigh in, and we'll start with Ken. Are they planning to uh, resubmit uh, in a different site then? I have or heard. Is this the last permit, so I'm just wondering, uh, they didn't approve for the last permit, or uh, it's all, all over, all to the start again. It, it's my understanding that this is the third and final permit um, that is available. The select board did um, approve the host community agreement. Um, really, the issue is with the um, with Calix Peak and the site. Um, if there is another appropriate site that they're considering, they haven't shared that. At this time, um, I believe they were still trying to work out um, issues with the property owner, but did not want to continue this, continue this hearing any further. All right, thank you. Gene, any questions or comments? I'm not clear whether they're withdrawing their application or they're asking us to close the hearing or they're asking us to um, Rule no on the special permit application. They're asking us to close the hearing without a finding. What does that mean to close the hearing without a finding? That means that they're withdrawing their application. So we would make a motion in that case to accept the withdrawal of the application and close, um, close the hearing for docket number 3752. And they would have to file a they new would have to special permit. All, all over again, again. Okay. All the way start a new special permit. Thank you. That That's answers correct. my question. Yes. I have no objections to entertaining a motion to withdrawal. Great. Um, nor do I think that this um, has, there have been significant issues. We still, they have yet to present in front of us. Correct. And to belabor it at this point, I think we need to give them the time to see if this can work with uh, their site and their landlord um, and then have them come back when they have a real project. Yes. Agree. Okay. Thank you. Great. So is there a motion from the board to accept the withdrawal of uh, the application for docket number 3752 and uh, close the docket without finding? So moved. And can I amend in that Please. they would need to file a new special permit application. Correct, with the stipulation that the applicant, um, should they wish to pursue this project in the future, uh, return to the redevelopment board with a new, a fully new application. Okay. Would you Is accept that? Amendment? I will accept that. I will second then. Great, we'll take a roll call vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So uh, docket number 3752 has been closed without finding um, and should the applicant wish to um, pursue a new special permit, they would need to begin that process That's correct. again. Okay, let's move on to agenda item number three, which is the reopened public hearing for docket number 3602, 1207 to 1211 Massachusetts Avenue. And I will turn it over to uh, Director Ricker. So this is um, a request for a continuance of the permit, um, which is a three-year permit. Um, uh, Mr. Benson advised that um, given that the, the final appeal was exhausted in early December of 2020, we have until early December of 2023 to make a decision about whether to extend um, the existing EDR special permit for this project. Um, the applicant has not indicated um, you know, to my knowledge, for which amount of time or for how long um, this permit would need to be extended, um, only that um, he wishes that it be extended to, to some point so that it does not expire in early um, December. <clears throat> we have no updated plans. Um, it is still, the, 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 uh, the decision still stands. Um, uh, and um, like I said, we have nothing um, updated. It is still the same project. I think they're just asking for a continuance of the permit. Thank you. Um, so at this time, I would like to invite the applicant, um, Jim Doherty, if you'd like to um, 
present your request and any other information that you think would be pertinent to the to the board. Um, yep, if you could sit, please, so the microphone can pick you up. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me. Thank you for um, for agreeing to um, discuss this matter. Um, as I submitted to the Sorry, board. Sorry, if you could just introduce yourself for oh, the record. Oh, sure. Uh, my name is James Doherty. Um, I'm the owner of um, um, 1207 Mass Ave and 1211 Mass Ave, uh, collectively the two parcels involved in this, uh, this particular uh, development. Um, as many of you know, um, last time I was here, I mentioned uh, um, that um, the hospitality industry, needless to say, was the, probably the hottest hit. Um, I don't think uh, many people would doubt that uh, through the COVID experience that we had. Um, recently, going back to the last quarter, uh, I mean the uh, second quarter of this year, uh, the hospitality industry and the jobs reports indicated, you know, it's kind of getting back. I think a lot of people have experienced that. I think even, you know, somewhat probably into 2002 as well. So I think um, the project has already, always been a very viable project. Uh, I think it would be a tremendous asset to the community, um, both from a development standpoint, from uh, a revenue standpoint, um, and um, I'm here respectfully asking that it um, be extended. I did request a two-year extension um, as part of um, COVID-19 and then going back to the financial uh, crisis uh, downturn in the um, in the beginning 2008 through 10 period. Uh, there was similar legislation that was enacted uh, during both of um, you know that event back then and then more recently COVID. Um, but I'm here to discuss it with the board and um, you know hopefully we all share the goal of um, it was a vibrant project um, back then and it uh, and I think it still is. We just need to. Uh, get through COVID and um, I think we're through there. I think you're starting to see people invest versus before. I think they were trying to hold on to their assets. Um, financial institution that uh, I, I've worked with and very familiar with, they had a lot of uh, hospitality clients. Uh, needless to say, during that period, I think they were more um, concerned about um, payments that had, um, loans that had been extended and receiving those payments. And I think now they're um, looking for new opportunities. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I'll turn it over to other members of the board um, in just a minute, but I do have a, a couple of questions for you. Um, and I do want to say that um, the hospitality business is one of the businesses that I work in, and it's been very vibrant for the past two years. So um, it's disappointing to me to see that there has not been progress on this site. Um, how far away are you from submitting drawings to the building department? Um, I, ha I have no nothing mocked up right now for that. That wouldn't happen until um, you know something concrete is nailed down for the for the reuse of it. Until something is concrete. It, what is not concrete? You have an approved site well, we, plan. What is not concrete that needs to be nailed down? Well, we need to acquire an operator to operate the hotel, and we would need to work through that financially have, to do it. You have no progress on an operator at this time? I'm not prepared to tell you tonight that we're here to uh, introduce a uh, operator, no. Okay. That answers my questions. Dean? The, the other interesting thing about the project a few years ago was the restaurant which was going to be um, a, a sit-down, nice restaurant. I wonder if you have any body company lined up for that sort of restaurant at this point. Uh, the restaurant is geared off uh, the hotel use itself. So we would not entertain um, renting out or identifying and committing to someone for a restaurant um, till the hotel operator is selected. Um, it just um, doesn't work that way. Can you tell us the steps you went through between when you got the special permit and now to attempt to make this project happen during the past three years? Sure. 
Um, well, the past three years, um, just to dial it back for everyone, um, this project was initially discussed um, when the RFP went out in terms of um, the 2016 timeframe, okay? Um, the property was not even controlled and we didn't get in front of the ARB until I believe it was uh, the summer to early fall of two uh, 2019. I believe the second hearing was in January uh, 28th, maybe of 20, um, uh, just before COVID. And I think the approval was done in, the Ju in June of 20. Um, to be honest with you, me like many property owners at that point were very uncertain. Very uncertain that we were taking care of uh, a lot of people that were unemployed uh, that we, um, we provide housing for. Um, I was taking care of uh, a mortgage on uh, one of those properties and keeping uh, commercial tenants that easily could have been put to the door in their places. Um, simultaneous, um, we continued some discussion with some people that had been interested in the project, uh, but needless to say, they were not uh, in a position to pull a trigger on building. Um, as a person who's uh, in valuation um, for a living and uh, have a lot of clients who are also in the hospitality business, um, I don't think many people saw much, much action at all um, well through 20, 21, and well into 22 in terms of new construction that wasn't um, already financed or um, committed to contractually for other obligations. So we've done a tremendous amount of um, effort. We are the people who um, have put a lot of money, who have paid a lot of uh, money for that property um, and um, are looking to move forward. Just to digress, um, in the initial hearing, there was a lot of noise around the hearing itself, around the project. And um, a lot of that, those accusations and undercurrent of some of those discussions were not appreciated, still aren't appreciated. And- um, Excuse me, if I, you're not gonna speak directly, I, we don't, I, I, I'm not- um, I'm getting, I, I think I deserve me, it, to it, get to the, the point. You're, you're very general right now, and I either need you to be really specific or tie this back I'm, to the I'm, request. I'm, I'm fine with the comments I made so far. I'd just like to wrap up, including comments that were attributed from this board on cable TV about the economics of that project and what the status was. And this has been over the course of the last year, year and a half. Not one of those people from the department, from this board, before making any of those statements, ever spoke to me. That's what I'm referring to, very Thank specifically. Thank you. Have you closed on this property with the town? I've closed on it a long time ago. So all of, it's been fully transacted, you're in full possession of the property? I am in full possession of the Thank property. Thank you. Steve? I, wait, oh, sorry. Another question. When, when you were here last time in here, meaning the ARB, and we approved it, uh, you were, anticipating that this would be a boutique hotel. Mm -hmm. Is that still your um, goal? That's what I'm here requesting the extension for. Gene, you see what's being built in this town. You know what I do for uh, um, some of my investments, okay? I could have built residential there a long time ago. I could have built it going back into the 17, 18 time frame. I could go out and I could do it tomorrow. I'm here because I was from this town. I am from this town. I'm making a major investment not far from, from you, where I grew up in Jason Heights. And- I know that house you're I, working on. I grew up there. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. I could turn around at any moment and change the direction, okay? The economics involved in this project um, as a proposal to this town. Two, the undercurrent of why going three 
directors of planning and community development back where they initiated the whole concept about mixed use was to get commercial revenue in this town and somehow create classification as a way for taxpayers to be, for, to be able to afford to live in this community. This is the only real project that somehow advances that and I know there's been a lot of discussion on all these projects that have come through. So I sit here tonight continue, continuing to extend my willingness to try to make a good project succeed for myself, my family, and for the town. And to the extent that the board elects not to extend it, I'm fine. I'll move on. I just want to be abundantly clear with that. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a couple other Please. questions. Um, I guess this is not a question, just you're sounding awfully defensive and I'm not sure why you feel like you need to sound defensive. We really haven't, sure. made, we haven't really made any decision mm -hmm. about this and we're here to listen and to understand. Mm -hmm. um, I am we, defensive and I'll tell you why in a moment. You, that you, wasn't a question, I don't think. No. You, right. It you, was you had mentioned in some previous times the legislature during periods of economic downturn did extend special permit terms, mm -hmm. but I don't think they did it that would affect this. Am I right about that? I didn't, um, I did not deep dive that deep. I think the result was is because it had more to do with how people went through a lot of permitting process, boards went through a lot of permitting process, and the goal was not if you uh, in a recession, uh, which could be synonymous with um, what a lot of people thought were going to happen, and did happen to a lot of people during COVID, um, that really, how are you going to come out the other side? And if I could, because you asked, you, you inferred it, so I think I'm entitled to respond to you felt that I was defensive. I believe, as all the board members know and the director knows, I've been trying to get dialogue going on this matter since last fall. I've gone months on end of communication to have this discussion, and here we are, as you thankfully noted at the last meeting, that we're at the 11th hour, okay? And again, I'm here not begging, asking, coming how I approached this project when I first put it in as a economic development package that we can all discuss what the value of that piece of property was without the benefit of knowing that you were gonna enter into something that was gonna be a joint venture. I'm gonna be honest with you, I've never felt the love, never. And I'm not looking for love, okay? I'm Thank looking you. to work do together. Any other questions? Yeah, I do. I do have one other question. I appreciate. Let me finish my answer, but, but I'm we're all, all done. Set. Thank you. Si yeah, I know since, I am too. Since we, in the time since we issued the permit, there have been some changes in zoning mm -hmm. um, that would affect the building. Were we to issue the permit now, mm -hmm. um, examples include the requirement for solar on a roof, um, um, the extended stretch code, mm -hmm. things like that. And I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering out loud sure. for my you know, colleagues on the board, mm -hmm. if there's a way for us to extend the permit but also um, impose those other conditions that would have been in place were we to issue the permit now instead. We can certainly discuss, um, yeah. I think that any extension of the permit, we would need to discuss what the conditions are um, for, for that extension. Steve? You have any, let me just ask, do you have any thoughts about that? I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to, finally uh, I get to respond. No, it doesn't sound like me. anybody wants to hear my response. To, to Jim to weigh in on whether or not we can impose um, okay. any, any type of restrictions. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just have one question. Um, you're essentially looking, uh, you're not proposing any change to the plans that were approved in, um, what was it, August of 2020? I am not, correct. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Madam Chair. Great, thank you. Ken? Uh, 
Yeah, I'm still supportive of this project. Uh, when it first came through, I thought it was a very nice project that would uh, add to the town. Um, the only stipulation I'd probably add uh, is uh, I'm supportive of the two-year uh, extension, but, uh, in, in, but in one year's time, I like, uh, I'd like them to come back uh, to the board and to tell us what the progress is in the year's time so that things are still moving forward and what they have done in that year's time to keep the communication open to us. It's a two-way dialogue. So if we meet within a year, say here's, here's what we've done and, uh, and, and we'll, then uh, that'd be fine. If you, if you don't, then I would say uh, um, uh, the extension ends. Uh, at that at that one year time, otherwise you don't get the full two years. Great, thank you, Ken. We'll certainly discuss that after we take um, public comment. I think that any conditions that we would impose, we would want to discuss after after public comment. Uh, so at this time, and are there any other questions for Mr. Doty before we move to public comment? Can uh, I make one last comment? Uh, I don't think we have any other questions. So I think at this time we'll open it up for public comment. Um, so any member of the public who's joined us this evening who um, wishes to uh, speak regarding the request for extension for this, um, for this project, uh, if you could please raise your hand. Thank you. And for anyone who is speaking this evening, I will remind you that you will have um, up to uh, three minutes Please introduce yourself by your first and last name and address. Thank you. Hi, thank you. My name is Susan Stamps, 39 Grafton Street. I'm a town meeting member and a member of the tree committee, although I am not. Um, the tree committee did not have a, a chance to discuss this matter. Um, <clears throat> I emailed the I only recently found out about this hearing and I emailed the uh, redevelopment board um, three, three items that I wanted it to consider earlier today. And I'd just like to tell you what those were. One is, the first is that the uh, 2020 special permit section 7A approves planting of so-called flowering pear trees and as a member of the tree committee, I understand that our tree warden no longer plants um, flowering pear trees because they've been uh, proven to be brittle and invasive. So I would ask that you um, require the developer to consider, to consult with the tree warden and plant a species recommended by him in writing or um, alternatively to use the tree committee's list of recommended urban trees on the uh, tree Committee's website, arlingtontrees.org. Number two, um, as Mr. Benson pointed out, there have been some uh, additions to the local laws since this permit was originally um, approved. And one of them is um, section 6.3.1 of the zoning bylaw, which requires a developer to plant a street tree every 25 feet along the development and I would, um, that is critical to allaying the effects of um, urban heat island during development and on the streets and I would ask the redevelopment board to include that in any uh, approval of the permit and then third and last would be what uh, Mr. Benson brought up which was that since then town meeting has passed, passed the so-called um, municipal opt-in specialized stretch code, known as the specialized stretch code, which has um, much uh, stronger uh, requirements for energy efficient building, and it would be a tragedy to have this project go forward without those newer um, energy uh, uh, provisions that the that town meeting has requested. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public wishing to speak this evening, please? Uh, Anne LaRoyer, 12 Pierce Street. 
uh, a neighbor of this site and um, I've had a lot of concerns about the project from the very beginning, but um, the fact that it may be delayed even longer means that the site remains unimproved and it's, um, you know, there's, it's not a very attractive site. One, one of the arguments to, to make the hotel in the first place was to clean up that uh, property, but it hasn't been cleaned up. So I'm just concerned about how long, how much longer it's gonna stay in its rather um, untempered state. Um, I know there, there's lots of other issues, but that's, that's just an immediate concern of how long it's gonna be left. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other members of the public wishing to speak this evening? Okay, seeing no hands, we will close public comment and turn it back to the board for discussion. Um, so, I, I'm sorry, did I miss somebody? Okay, um, so uh, Ken has suggested that he is in support of the two-year extension with a request for in one year's time there to be um, progress I'm concerned that no progress <laughs> has been made and that one year is too, two year extension is too long and, and one year is too long to um, go if we offer an extension at all. Like Ms. LaRoyer um, indicated, um, the site has not been maintained and um, it continues to, um, to, to really be a, um, a challenge for, for the community. Um, that, that nothing has, has happened here. Um, and to Jean's point, quite, quite a lot has happened <laughs> in the intervening years. And, um, you know, I, 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 ju I, I don't have a lot of confidence that this is going to move forward, even with the extension. Jean, what are your thoughts? I guess the concept, I think, is still a worthwhile concept. Um, I, it's hard for me to judge whether it could have moved forward during the three years because Mr. Doherty says it can't, you're in the business and you say, yes, these things have moved forward in the past three years. I think two years is too long. Um, I'm not sure what I would do. I might. I'm not sure what I would do, but if, if it were shorter than two years, and if all of the, if it had to comply with all of the current zoning, um, including what town meeting just passed, um, well, I think what town meeting just passed doesn't affect it. No, we can't require no. that yet. Well, we can, because once it's passed. Once it's passed, Once yes. it's passed, but yes. none of it affects it. But I think all of the, all of the current zoning, which would, you know, things the town would want, I, I'd consider it, but I want to hear what everyone has to say. Sure. Steve? So, yeah, regarding the um, net, the stretch, co uh, the enhanced stretch code, that's, that's basically a building permit requirement, is it not? So it's not something yes. that we would, you know, it's the condition, if, if, the, app, if, uh, Mr., if the applicant were to get a building permit, he would have to uh, build to those codes. Correct. There is that's no, right. there, yes. Ken was just mm -hmm. weighing in as well. There, because there has been no building permit application, mm -hmm. um, he has not circumvented needing to comply with that. Yeah, I, I, I'm tending to agree with Mr. Lau in that um, I'm okay with a two-year extension, but I would like to see uh, evidence of movement after a year. Um, and I, I do agree that there, uh, with some of the, the suggested mock condition modifications, like to the tree, tr tree species and um, compliance with the uh, tree planting bylaw, like a tree every 25 feet on, on frontage. In other words, um, yeah. basically, if, if we were to extend it, I'd like to see us um, include conditions that are in the bylaw today. So those conditions would be the um, the 6.3.1, mm -hmm. the street tree plantings, the compliance with the solar bylaw. Yes. Gene, am I missing any? 
I, I, I would can't we, think of any, but I think we if would we want say, to review it. I think we, if we say would have to comply with the current zoning bylaw, not the bylaw in place mm -hmm. when we issued the special permit. I think the challenge. I, I think I think we need to be more specific mm -hmm. about that. Um, to be to be honest, because I I think we need to make it clear to. I mean, if we're going to request that, I think we need to be clear with the applicant rather than having them have to go through and scrub as to what the specific requirements would, would be. I think that that's only fair. So, you know, we could, um, nothing is going to happen in the next two weeks. So we certainly could continue it and make sure that we work with Claire to make sure that we have a full list of those items. I think that the two major items are the, the street trees and the, the solar bar. Yes. So Madam Chair, I would be happy with those provisions and uh, just uh, changes to the, uh, the planting plan. And the planting plan. In terms of the request that they comply with the tree committee's current list of approved species. Yes. Ken, any other um, conditions that you would want to put on any extension? I just want to say that I think it's, the time frame that I said about a year and two years is pretty fair. Uh, I just want to clarify that within that year's time, I think you want to know, um, you know, have they reached an agreement with a uh, with a hotel flag? That that's the kind of stuff um, I'm interested in. I just don't want. To, what let me say we, we're still in progress. I want names of, of the of hotels they've been talking to. Have they um, entered into a contract with an architect to start the working drawings for, for a building permit at the end of the two years? That kind of stuff. It's, it's going to take about roughly about nine months, maybe maybe a year, to produce the full set of drawings and the value engineering or whatever for, for the hotel. So within that one year time, we'll know has an architect been hired, has has a hotel flagship been uh, determined. I think that is fair to not force them to do something rash, you know, and, and keep it going. So I'm just, I just want to re reiterate that the, that one year I said I think is pretty fair. That's all I'm saying. Thank you, Ken. Um, I. I think one year is too long to wait for an update. I, I, you know, I agree with you. I think it's going to take some time for um, the full design and development team to create the documentation that's ready for for permit. But I, you know, if we extend it, I would want um, no more than than six months and an update because again, I think that we've we've gone this long with literally no movement and for um i think we owe it to the community to keep a um tighter eye on this to make sure that it that it moves forward so you saying two two six months a six month and a one year update and still keep the two year extension i, I think that'd be a fair compromise I'm, I'm suggesting that as a possibility. Again, just to ensure that in another year we don't have the same situation that we're in right now. Okay. Because if we are, you know, at some point we have to say, you know, should should this project continue as originally approved, which was started back in 2019, or is it at at that point um, something that needs to be fully re-permitted. I feel like there was uh, six months uh, of first initial uh, progress, one year, another, but the uh, full extension being two years, uh, where the permit is valid for two years. I'd be okay with that. Jean?
I'd be interested in hearing from Mr. Doherty about whether he can meet this time frame. Great. Mr. Doherty, can you speak to um, a six-month progress check-in uh, if the board is to grant a two-year extension? I have no problem with the six-month check-in. I was going to mention this earlier. I'm the person paying the bills. I will tell you, we won't be sitting here in another year unless I'm going to build a hotel, talking about a hotel. We may be back here in six months if that doesn't happen, and I will be um, letting you know I will be building something else. I'm the person that's carried this for the time. I appreciate your insight and everyone else's concern. It was an automotive use before I bought it. It can continue to be an automotive use. I'm trying to do something better here. I'd appreciate uh, your support. Thank you. Just to be clear, while I have the microphone, I'm not trying to be disagreeable, but I think it's wholly unfair to ask me if I should accept some of the changes to the bylaws that have a cost effect to me, while not also acknowledging, I believe, that the uh, FAR on that site went from 1.5 to 3.0. So if we're going to open things up, then I think we should be discussing that as well, so that there's even balance to both sides. So I'm not saying yes or no to anything, but I'm just saying when you talk about some things that went through, the FAR for that site, as you all know, has doubled. It, it has, and, and actually that's something that, you know, if you did want to take advantage of that the, and wanted to re ask the board to reopen the permit and wanted to, um, or to start a new permit to be able to take advantage of those items, you are, you have not started construction on that site, you've not submitted anything, you are wholly within your I'm rights to be able to do that. So that is certainly not a threat to the board. That is it something, what? it is certainly not something to be used as a threat to the board, but it's something we would embrace if that is something that you wanted to, to, to take on, to, to relook at the FAR, that we would be more than happy to discuss what that process would look like. I greatly appreciate that, but I also want to be abundantly clear. There was no threat there. My thing was very simple that, you know, you're asking for someone to expend more money on something, and I'm not even necessarily opposed to it, but I'm just saying if we're going to have that dialogue, um, we should have it in a holistic way so we can look at all of those things. All I'm saying is, as much as I'd like to tell you, I would do that yesterday. The bottom line is we have something that we've had a lot of input from people, good, bad, and different. We have something that's approved, not what I wanted, not what you wanted necessarily, but it's there. So I'm trying to be more practical. Um, and I'll be frank, you guys know it, I know it, no operator is going to walk in there and say the rooms are perfect, the restaurant space is perfect, the vent coming through the roof is perfect. So there was going to be some type of minor engineering changes. So I'm with you on the big scheme of things, and I have a lot of relatives that have been with you for a long, long time, but I wanted to do something that I felt um, was extremely tasteful and beneficial to the town. So I appreciate all your time. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the the most important thing, again, that this the town sold this parcel for this project to, to happen. Mm -hmm. And so to us, as a board, and I'll, maybe I'll just speak for me and you all can as well, to me the most important thing is that the town who, who um, sold this property to you mm -hmm. with the promise that this would be developed, mm -hmm. This was then handed to the redevelopment board 
to ensure that we work together with you mm -hmm. for a project that would be built. Mm -hmm. And so the most important thing I think that now rests on this board is that we figure out the best cadence to work together with you to ensure that as the select board conveyed that property, that that property is used for the best outcome for the town. Mm -hmm. We all want to see this project built. Mm -hmm. Nobody in that community wants to see this mm -hmm. continue to lay vacant for another three years. Mm -hmm. And so the check-ins are the only vehicle at this point that we have. I'm not opposed to it. I'm not insulted by it. To I make just sure want to that make that sure forward. that throughout the process, we have going to what you uh, just mentioned, get to that because I will just tell you it was sorely missing before, not from the board per se, but I'm going to just give you one example. They had in uh, Arlington Heights, just the beginning meetings of the Arlington Heights Neighborhood Association. I went to the meeting at Dallin School, the first meeting they had. Uh, I then followed up with someone who's no longer employed here and asked them if I could get the contact name for that group. They said they don't want to be contacted. Give me your name if they want to talk to you. I just didn't feel that that was an economic development process type thing. So I'm all for you. I'm trying to be positive. I'm moving that way. I don't look in the rearview mirror. So I'm very happy with what you just mentioned at the end there because it's been a lot of pressure on me uh, personally. And I'm not crying, don't get me wrong, but I'm not a dumb person. When you know you have 3.0 and you get approved for 1.67, doesn't take a math scientist to figure out, you know, what's more beneficial. But that's not always the case. But we may get there uh, for other reasons. So I appreciate your time, and I know you want to keep me brief. I don't blame you. But okay. So um, I just want to turn it back to the board for because we either need to decide we have a finding this evening or we need to continue this um, to, to for another week. Um, so uh, Steve... Would you like to weigh in on where you're currently leaning at this point? Yeah, so I, I, I take Mr. Doherty's point that the bylaw has changed in multiple directions. And yes, if he were to reapply to today, he could, uh, there would be a much higher FAR limit. So I'm more inclined to, I'm, I think I am at this point more inclined to do sort of just like a clean um, extension. Um, but, you know, so no change to conditions, no change to the plans, um, but with the check-ins as, you know, have been described earlier, if there is mutual agreement to, if Mr. Dougherty would want to, um, you know, basically reopen and bring forward a different set of plans that conform to the current bylaw, um, you know, then we, you know, possibly building to an, a higher FAR, then, you know, I think that's something we can... That, that's, that's a separate a whole other, discussion that's a whole around whether or not... Yeah, that's but yeah, a, but, but for now, I, I'm thinking clean extension. Okay. Gene? Um, I'm okay with the two years. I like the idea of a check-in at six months and one year. I'm not okay with the clean extension because we could just as easily say no, and then he would have to start all over again, and he, I'm not sure he can get up to FAR of three on that side anyhow, but um, I would, I'm, and the two things are not very expensive. You know, the tree planting bylaw is not expensive at all, and the solar bylaw will pay for itself in a relatively short period of time. So I would like those added, and I would like us to sort of make clear that if there are significant changes to the project, for example, if it's no longer a boutique hotel, but it's a chain hotel, that's not going to be acceptable. I am in full agreement with your suggestions, Gene. Ken? I can agree with uh, Steve. I like to keep this as clean, uh, clean as possible. Uh, uh, to your extension, with the check-in of six months and 12 months, and I leave it as an option, and only as an option for Mr. Darden to uh, look at some of the changes, but uh, not to go back and revisit a decision that, that was made before. 
Yes, he could have. Uh, uh, I think it's the end of what we have you know, just, just give, give and take. If we just have, um, after we say yes and then we add things on to it, I don't believe in power like that. So I'm going to just uh, leave it at, at that and say, I agree with Steve, and uh, I would vote for that one better. Okay, well, we're going to need to hash this one out because I will not vote to extend it if we, um, if we aren't able to do the requests for the um, additional compliance with the new street tree bylaw and the solar bylaw. Um, Gene, I'm not sure what your position is. I, I, that's the way I feel also. So, and if, well, if we're deadlocked, the, the permit's going well, to expire it, I mean, it's, in a few weeks. Is the, does extending a permit require a two-thirds vote? We, we, uh, because it would take it would take a two thirds vote to grant it would take four question. to grant this. Right. So um, if like just you know counting the votes, if two vote no, then that's you know then the, basically the permit runs out. Right. And I would not vote no for, if there were additional conditions on it because I I would like the applicant to to have a. I'd like to give the applicant a little more time. I do understand, you know, the, the effect that the pandemic had. So we're giving him more time. It just has to do two minor things. Yep. So you would be... So we need to find out whether we need four there's, extensions. There's no answer. I looked at it. You already looked at it? Mm -hmm. The, um, yeah, there's nothing in our bylaw about that. talks that. about the extension? Or in 40A. Okay. About that, but I think the to me the better interpretation is we need four. I, I would agree. I would agree. So Steve, are so you could get behind the addition or could not? Get, I could. I you could. could get behind requiring six point three point one and the solar bylaw um, to be required, as yes. well as the current the list of. The tree species. Tree species that are currently approved by the tree warden. Yep. I would I would prefer a clean extension, but I could get behind um, with, uh, with the provisions that you stated. Okay. Ken, is that something that you could get behind, or would you be opposed? To those provisions? I mean, if you have three you say you're not going to uh, uh, vote yes, then, then it's, it's a mute, right? I mean, uh, it doesn't really matter what I say. Well, we would, again, we would, um, if, it, if we need four, again, because we are only have <laughs> four to four right now when we need um, four votes to move this forward, um, we would, you know, either need you to, um, accept that compromise or we would not be able to move forward this evening and we need to continue and have further discussion. Well, I think the tree thing is, is, is pretty minor. One or two trees is not going to kill the project. What I'm concerned about is the solar. Okay, you're saying, uh, we're saying we have to meet the solar requirements of putting solar panels up there. And um, that project was never designed to have solar panels up there. All right, so that's going to change the whole architecture of how that thing looks. So you, 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 I think you're just adding something on that's going to really change the whole character of the thing where we had approved already. So where uh, we had rooftop units there with uh, a farm that was closed in by fences between the two cores, there's very little room uh, for solar panels that go up there. Uh, or something else is going to change. Is that, I, I don't know what the, I'm not sure what the consequences is by just simply saying we're going to meet the new requirements. The solar bylaw has exemptions in it if the roof can't handle it, if it's um, pointed in the wrong direction, if it's shaded. So if it doesn't meet any of those requirements, it shouldn't be very difficult 
for solar to be added to the roof? So what you're saying is, if it is, if, if he comes back and says, I can't add solar to the roof because of the following reasons, and met the, met the obligations, then this, then what, our obligation that we're adding to them is just, is then no longer valid. And all it is is the trees, adding some trees. Correct, but the onus would be on the developer, much like with um, many, many items that are in the zoning code to ensure that um, they have made the effort towards compliance. That there, are, there are a number of exemptions in the solar bylaw, and he could explain how he meets one of the exemptions, and then if he does, he doesn't have to do it, but if he doesn't meet any of his exemptions, then he would have to do it. And the building's not completely designed yet. So I, I don't think it's a burden. I will go along with the compromise just because I want to see this project go forward. And I'll leave it up to Mr. Dory to decide if he wants to do so or not. Okay. Uh, so is there a motion from the board to approve a two-year extension with regular six-month check-ins over that two-year, two excuse me, two-year period with regular six-month check-ins over that two-year period with the redevelopment board um, with the conditions that the um, current zoning bylaw sections 6.3.1 for street trees and 6.4 for solar energy systems. 6.4 for solar energy systems be incorporated into the project as well as the uh, tree plantings um, for the project be specified in accordance with the current uh, approved list of species uh, by the town. And can we pick a date as opposed to two years? So the permit would expire, as I figured this out, on December 8, because that was the date three years ago of the court decision. So we would extend this to December 8, 2025. Thank you. And uh, yes, I think we can do that, and we can work um, as we go through our list of meetings um, in our next agenda item, we can identify which meetings we would like the applicant to come back and provide updates for this year. Miss, would we like to, in terms of, um, in terms of crafting a motion? Yes. Um, we, we've, we've settled on one, two years is. Would we like to settle on one, six months is? That's what I'm, I'm saying. Yeah. Um, what I'd like to do is make sure that we look at our, and I could do that now. Might as well. So our 2024 meeting schedule. Be May 6. Which may be in the middle of town meeting. That's so okay. let's call this, which should be fine because, mm -hmm. yeah, let's call it May 6. Okay. All right, so is there, let me restate the motion. Is there a motion to extend, uh, for, to extend this special permit uh, two years to December 8th, 2025 with regular six month check-ins, the first of which being May 6th, 2024, and the future date set thereafter with the additional provision that the applicant comply with Section 6.3.1 for street trees, Section 6.4, the solar bylaw, and that the uh, tree species that are specified within the project are in compliance with the approved uh, species and uh, as approved by the town. And Section 6.3. Public shade trees, you didn't mention. I, I did, yes, 6.3 okay. shade trees and 6.4 solar bylaw. Okay. I will so move. I will second. Great. We'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. 
Thank you very much. We will now close docket number three seven, excuse me, three six zero two, twelve oh seven to twelve eleven Mass Ave. Let's now move to agenda item number four, which is the twenty twenty four ARB meeting schedule. Uh, Claire, thank you for drafting this uh, meeting schedule. As, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to pull this up. Give me a second. Here we go. Um, so as is typical, I believe that the base schedule has us meeting the first and third um, Monday of every month with um, exceptions made for holidays and um, uh, other, other times of year when we, um, where it is more challenging to meet. I did want to identify, I believe that the April 15th meeting date is uh, during school vacation week. Yep. So I wanted to see if we could move that date either to April 8th or 22nd. I'm assuming that the 22nd, although the 22nd is Passover, so that wouldn't be a great date. So maybe, um, We, we most likely will need additional dates leading up to town meeting, so I'm wondering if the 1st, the 8th, and the 29th become our three dates in April. Mm -hmm. Is there any objection to that? No. So okay. say that again, please. So rather than April 15th, um, that's just a challenge for me because it's school vacation week and um, my plans are not yet fixed. <laughs> um, so my thought was April 1, April 8th, Eight and April 29th is the three April meeting dates. And then the other dates I wanted to look at were the July dates and any August dates. Um, that's a long period where we don't have any meetings right now in July. Um, so my, unless we already have a challenge with July 15th, um, was rather than July 8th to do July 1st and 15th and maybe the 5th of August. Okay. We can always eliminate if, you know, again, I know the people's plans aren't fixed yet, but I'd rather have a couple of dates in there um, because that was a challenge, I know, this year <laughs> without having those, those dates on the calendar. So I wanted to propose that and see what the board thought. So we do August as uh, tentative because we, we normally have taken August off. Correct. So are you, would you be okay, Ken, with um, July 1st and 15th rather than the 1st and the 8th? Just to give us a little bit further into July as the meeting either date? Way, either, either way is fine with me. Okay. Um, and then let's do a tentative date for August 5th. Can I add one more request? Yes. Um, can we schedule in a, uh, a retreat? for the board members for uh, next year's direction and, and issues? Yes, we had talked about doing that once the new board member was on board. Um, one of the items that I'd like to put on the agenda for um, our next meeting in two weeks is to talk about the schedule leading up to Springtown meeting yep. um, because that's going to be the Arlington Heights Business District, you know, we need to Congratulations on a great show. 
at fall town meeting, but we've got to jump right into springtown yes, meeting prep. Yes. So I'm looking, for, I'm actually looking forward to that. I so. am too. I am too. There's a lot of excitement in in the community about that one. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that, Ken, to your point, perhaps we look at um, an early December date or an early mm -hmm. January date, but we need to schedule something. I think. Um, where again we bring in the new board member and and you know talk through. I have quite a list of items that we had earmarked potentially for 2024 mm -hmm. Springtown meeting, and uh, we sooner rather than later need to go through and determine which of those we mm -hmm. are in fact going to move forward with. Yeah. And we can do that at the retreat. That's typically a great time to do that. We obviously will do that in one of these public forums as well. Not that the Retreat isn't public, that is public as well. But um, uh, what are your thoughts, Ken, on dates for that or Claire? I'll let Claire speak first. We had talked about doing the retreat in early December. Yes, I think, think December is better before. than January. Um, and Shana will be on after the 20th. So I, I saw that our, uh, our fifth board member is going before the select board on Wednesday. Correct. Correct. So they would. That's correct. Um, I'm in the wrong year. That's not helpful. Uh, they would be <laughs> available for the 20th, the meeting on the 20th, November 20th. So um, just looking ahead. Um, Saturdays are all soccer all the time for me, so they can be a little <laughs> bit challenging. <laughs> I can make that work. Um, Sundays are a little bit better. I'll, I'll, for the sake of putting a pin in, in something, uh, what about December 3rd? 3rd. We potentially make that work. Is contingent what, upon what, the what availability. That Saturday or Sunday? That's, a Sunday. That's a Sunday. It's a Sunday. I can make I can make a Saturday work there just a little bit more logistically challenging. No, Sunday's fine. Uh, fine. Right. I can do December third. So do we want to tentatively look at December third? And we can finalize that date. Uh, on the 20th sure well hopefully before then we can we can communicate back and forth and if we need um, to identify a backup date we can do that great okay, okay. Good. fabulous for the schedule yes I, I cannot be here on June 3rd okay then let's find another date for that one could we do June 10 and 17 sure um, would we want to Ten and twenty-four. And the other thing we could do, we could run off schedule a little bit in June and do ten. Well, we could do ten and seventeen. That's fine. Thank you, okay. people. All right. All right. Ten and well, seventeen. I also, be able to make one more request. Yep. On the. Uh, the retreat on the third. Yes. Can we get an update on past projects that we've approved already to date? Uh, where the status of that is? Um, you know, the project next to the CVS, where that stand right now? Um, some of the other projects that we've uh, approved, uh, you know, they're probably two years in. Some, some may be three, some might be one year in. I just want to know where everything is standing right now with all the projects we've done in the last, say, three to four years that's been approved. Okay. Is that too much to ask, Claire? I will, uh, I will do the best I can, um, but I should be able to provide um, an update at least on everything we've done in the past year or two for sure. I can see how far I can go back, though. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. 
Great. Any other uh, requests? We can put together an agenda for that retreat ahead of time and circulate that for mm -hmm. review. <coughs> Great. All right. Uh, so let's see. Let me come back to my agenda. So do we need to vote on this board schedule as amended? We will. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve the board schedule as amended? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We'll take a vote starting with Ken. Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. The board schedule for 2024 has been approved. All right, let's close agenda item number four and move to agenda item number five, which is open forum. Uh, does anyone who is still with us this evening have anything you would like to share? Seeing nothing, uh, we will close agenda item number five and move to agenda item number six, new business. Claire? Um, the only new business I have to share with the board is um, the uh, uh, your fifth member. I had an interview with um, Jim Feeney, um, and um, she still is very graciously agreed to become uh, a mm. member of this board um, to be confirmed uh, by the select board on Wednesday and then sworn in and at your meeting on the 20th. So Fantastic. Yeah. Great. Thank you for moving that forward. Sure. I have, two, I have two things related to um, the town meeting addressing the MBTA communities. Um, and we didn't have, really have a chance to discuss this ahead of time. I think we, I'm not sure who the we is, needs to put together an application for site plan review. So when someone comes in and, you know, it's no longer EDR review, but their site plan review, that we have that already yep. for when the first one comes in. So I don't know, Claire, if you and the department want to do the first cut. Sure, we can put together a draft, absolutely. Um, I think that would be great. If not for the 20th, then for, certainly for the board retreat or the 4th, meeting on the 4th. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that would include, that would go into the rules and regulations as well. We'd need to include. Maybe we need to look and see, because I don't think the EDR applications in the rules. It's not, but I think we had it earmarked, and, and I have it in my notes, that there are there is a section of our rules and regulations which does need to be, which does need to address site plan review. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and the other is, um, Maybe a report next time on where are we on the inclusionary zoning yes. piece and what's going to be yeah. happening. And, and I think just the general application process as well, that's something that would be great for us to be able to publicly report on. Sure. Oh, yeah. I guess I could have shared this as part of uh, new business. I did have a conversation with the state, uh, excuse me, with the consult, well, with both the state and the consultant um, on the economic feasibility analysis. It is progressing. Um, MAPC is our consultant there. Um, we are, we plan to, um, I did speak with the state. They said, you know, please use uh, their regular portal um, to submit our um, our final MBTA uh, communities language, you know, this was um, sort of in concert with them trying to do a pre-adoption review for us. So they do have all of our uh, documents. They'd just like for me to more formally um, submit them again. Um, and this will be done in a parallel process with the Attorney General's um, submission. So I have some folks on staff working on that and some folks on staff working on the submission to EOHLC. Um, but they will be done on a parallel process. And working with the city clerk on that as well. Town clerk, sorry. <laughs> Anything else, Gene? So we're going to put in the MBTA community zoning before we put in the inclusionary zoning because that's not going to be ready as quickly, right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The state knows it's coming. <laughs> yeah. And that's right. why that's written in that way so yeah. that they can do their review and right. Right. plan. Right. Anything else? Steve? So um, it's, it's fall. Uh, so there is an organization called the Massachusetts Citizen Planner Training Collaborative. Mm -hmm. And every year they put together a set of courses that are held virtually. They're fairly inexpensive and they deal with kinds of things that uh, planning and zoning boards um, uh, 
you know, they come up in the context of planning and zoning boards. Um, their schedule has was posted, I think, last week, and I, I believe there is a set, there is a um, module on site plan review, which I'm hoping to attend. <laughs> great, great, fabulous! Thank you for doing that, Steve. <laughs> great. Ken, any new business? No, I'm all set. I just spilled tea all over myself. Oh no! Well, with that, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Jean. Yes. Steve. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Feel better.